Wow, wonderful. Appreciate my father as he sits down. I'm glad to be here. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Um, uh, it's such an honor to be here today. I timed right uh, when you have been given gifts so that I can partake in everything. Before you sit down, I would like you to appreciate my father and my mother. I truly honor you. 18 years, 18 years is not a short time, neither a long time, because the journey is still continuing. And to me, it doesn't look like 18 years, it looks like three, four, five years, because there is so much to learn from you. I choose to continue submitted. God bless you very much, even as you sit down. I want you to appreciate my husband, <laughs> Elder Martin Karaoke. Please appreciate him better because you can imagine how much, how much he has to beg me, please don't make me talk, don't make me talk. Until I told him, okay, I have given up. So, uh, because I do all the talking, he does all the thinking for me, and I do the talking. So, kindly, he has already done his part, and Elder Martin, we honor you. I also want to honor the leadership of Living Faith Ministries International, Nyeri. Appreciate the leadership for this opportunity. <laughs> and all of you for coming this morning. This morning, I am sure that you are ready, right? You are ready. You never, you know, in Nyeri, Nyeri is a bit cold in the morning. So you didn't hit the cold to come and just pass a few hours and then go back. You came because you're interested with something. Hallelujah. You're interested with something and you're going to find it if you are looking for it. So this day, I guarantee you, being blessed, you will. Being blessed. You will, you will. I am guaranteeing you that you will be blessed because he is here. Not because of me, because he is here. So we are in the season of uh, storms of life. What a series. By the time Bishop was, was saying this is the season of, um, are we in the so storms of life? I already knew that we were there. I had already written an article about it. So I know that God, the Lord, is speaking. And I bring you greetings from Nairobi Church. I bring you greetings from Nairobi Church. Appreciate them. Please appreciate them. And I know Nairobi Church would have wanted to be here. The last time I was here, Dad, some people said pastor had said we go to church we go to nyeri so they were wondering how, how to get to nyeri so this time around i had to tell them that for nairobi church is happening and nyeri church is is happening because that's much they love to they love to come to nyeri it's an opportunity every time i am invited here so we are talking about the storms of life and there is one thing that is for sure you are either in a storm is it true you are either go uh, have gone through a storm Maybe it's over. Or you are about to get into a storm. I want to know where you are. Because you must be somewhere. Is it true? Have you just come out of a storm? How many have just come out of a storm? Are you sure you have come out or we are trying to get you out? We shall, we shall get to know at the end of this. How many are in a storm? How many know they are just about to get into a storm? That's not a very, very, very way of asking. You must be, you will be in one of these categories. I am not a prophet of doom, but I'm telling you, in case you have not come out of a storm, you are not in one, you are just about to get into one. I've just prophesied. Just, just in case you are looking for another prophet. Eh? The prophet is right here. I have spoken. Because the word of God is never in vain. 
when he sends his word, he sends his word because he knows it shall be accomplished. And thank God for you who has not entered because you shall not enter blindly. Neither shall you entertain it because you can never avoid it. I, I should never, you should never entertain a storm because it is never easy. So you must be in that one of those categories. So in case you're thinking you are not in any, here I am to tell you, write enough notes. If you can't write, record them in your heart. Because just before the season is over, you will be saying, ah, Mawimbi. You'll be singing that song. And all the other things that you'll be saying is, Jesus, get me out of this storm. So we are there. So today, we are in Jonah chapter number one, verse number one, all the way to 17. I will go to, I will keep on touching on any. So this morning, the book of Jonah talks about of a man who had a call. He was a prophet and a very good prophet. He was one that was learned. Jonah was a learned uh, prophet. Jonah was a true prophet. He was not a false prophet. But he was about to get into a storm. Uh, and embracing the call of God or walking in obedience is never easy. But this is where the pursuit of a God-centered life starts. Uh -huh. Are you understanding? Embracing the call of God, starting to walk in obedience has never been easy. But that is the starting point of pursuing a God-centered life. That is where the shame of a self-centered life is exposed. The minute you start embracing that call, the minute you start walking in obedience, we have been talking about hearing the voice of God and walking in obedience, here obeying the voice of God. The minute that begins, what begins to be exposed? The self-centered life. And Jonah had, as much as he was a prophet, as much as he was a good man, there was self-centeredness in him that needed to be exposed. He never knew how self-absorbed he was until God disturbed his comfortable life. You know, we don't know how comfortable we are in our jobs, in our families, in our marriages until our comfort zones become no comfort, become comfort no more. Until that job begins to shake, that is when you are like, oh God, Kumbe, I had invested everything in this job. And then you begin to look for God. Is it not true? Until you have walked down the aisle. Am I speaking to young people here? And you have enjoyed your honeymoon, not knowing drama stage is about to come. And now you begin to call Bishop and Reverend Emily. I don't know what is going on. They ask you what is going on. I can't even explain because this guy I got married to, I no longer understand him. What happened when you were understanding him and actually you have been told to wait? You couldn't even wait because you know this guy so well. Uh-huh. Is it true? What happened? You got a new job. Actually, you are even... Calling on your way, you are reporting on Monday. Then unakumbuka sambili. Haya, unajua si kwambia pasi. Eh? Nimepata job mpia. Un, you, you go to the toilet. But hello? And, and you are waiting to confirm until you sit. Eh? Have, you seen, have you seen people like those ones? They are waiting to confirm. For sure the job is there. So they report on Monday. They sit. For sure they say, haya, the job was for, for real. So at around 8 that you run to the toilet. No, it's when you are calling. Pasi, pasi. Uh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. I got a new job. And actually, I reported today. So, uh, so what do you want me to do? So you have informed me. Congratulations, you continue. What else can I do? So you reported. But I know, I know before you entered, before you reported, the minute a letter came, you'd have come to my office and said, Pastor, there is this new job I have gotten, and I am not entering without a word. Because I know the drama stage is about to come. I know a storm will come. And I will need this God. So I must start with God. Do you understand? Are we learning something? 
So before you get self-absorbed in that job, in that marriage, remember God and tell God, I surrender and walk in obedience because whichever way, storms come to the just and the unjust. To the just and the... It rains. Kulinyasha huko ujana. Au siku ingine. Did it separate? It was also, it rained in your house and it never rained in your neighbor's house because your neighbor's house is a murderer. So because you're so righteous, so it rained. No. Actually, the murderer seemed to have used the water that, that, that poured better than you. They have many tanks. And then you're wondering, ah, how come you had not thought about that? Because there are some things that happen to all. Just like trouble happens to all. But when trouble comes, what will happen? The Lord will not get out of you trouble. What will he do? He will allow you just like Jesus allowed the disciples to go head on to the storm. He sent them direct to the storm. He made them, the Bible says, he made them get into the boat. Are you getting it? He made them get into the boat. And, and he went to pray. When they had gone all the way, almost at the middle, the storm comes. But Jesus knew, because it is I who sent them, even at the center, if they look up to me, I am able to carry them to the other side. Because I am the one who has the ability to quiet, to make the storms, to make the voice be silent. Start with him. He is able to silence every storm of your life. If I were you, I'll tell Jesus, it looks like I left you in honeymoon. I got to go back and pick you because I know whichever way a time will come and I'll have to come to you and I say, Jesus, save us because we are perishing. Today I came to tell you, you are not going to perish. You are going to call Jesus so that you can rise above the storm. The storm was not made to destroy you. The storm was made to build you, to build your character. I believe that some of us need more character development. Oh, that storm is there to develop your character. Hallelujah. Oh, some of us needed a lot of character development. That is why when you're looking at this girl, you're wondering, who is she? This is a small girl who used to sing at the back. I never led in this church. For those that don't know me, my name is Carol, Jerry, karaoke. Then I was something else. I used to stand there at the back. But for me to come to the front, oh, there has been turbulent times. There has been suffering. There has been a lifting. I had heard, I have had to sing. <laughs> I have had to sing <laughs> that God, even though you slay me, oh, yet praise the Lord. I have had to sing. <laughs> oh, when my heart is overwhelmed, take me to the rock that is higher than myself. That is a person who understood the purpose of the storm. Hallelujah. So I don't want us to skim on these stones. But again, I don't want to take yourself there because of disobedience. It is not good. As storms are not good. Storms are painful. So if I were you, I would, I, would, I would allow them to find me as I obey. Not as I'm disobeying. Because as I obey, I am with Jesus. You see what happened to the disciples? They obeyed. They obeyed. That is why Jesus had to appear. They saw him coming because they had been made to go to the other side. And even when you're on your walk of obedience, at times when troubles come, you will fear. That is why Psalms 34 4 does not say, does not tell us, we'll be delivered out of trouble. What does the Bible say? You will be delivered from the fears. From the fears. Why? Even there in the trouble, you will need to have the courage to go over, to rise, to ask God, give me wings to fly, to face the storm head on. Let's continue. Hallelujah. So Jonah had something, was being sent to something new. Something? Something new. So he's told to go to Nineveh to live. Where he was. He was a prophet of God. To live where he was. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Was it good? 
And what is Nineveh? Nahum says, Nahum chapter number 3, verse 1. It describes Nineveh as a city of blood. Full of lies. Full of plunder. Never without victims. Who wants to go to a, to, to a terror invested city? Eh? Who wants to go to a place where there is violence? Who wants to go? So you know we look at Jonah and we think, how come this guy is so disobedient? I am talking to Jonas right now. Are you disobedient? No. No. Jonah. Put yourself in his shoes. He's been sent to go to a city that is called the city of blood, full of lies, full of plunder, never without victims. So every day there is shooting. Every day there is there are deaths happening. So and the Lord is telling to go there and proclaim judgment. Give me verse number two of Jonah chapter number one. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Who wants to try to go and tell the terrorist you're about to be done? God is about to finish you. You'll be killed before you say God is about to finish you. They will even sense you. So Jonah was not an ignorant person because at times we read this and we think that God you're talking to the church in Singapore. No. God is speaking to the church in Nyeri. Because we are where Jonah was. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Here, I don't want to go and preach against a terrorist country. I want to go and, and, and be very nice to them before I'm killed. Uh -huh. Because it is we, its wickedness has come before me. He is sent to go and prophesy against Nineveh. So what happened? Jonah feared. Jonah trembled. And that made him disobey. That made him Ran away. Let's continue with the same. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and he headed to Tashish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that, for that port. After paying the fare, he went abroad and uh, abode and sailed to Tashish to flee from the Lord. So Jonah ran away. Jonah had an opportunity to obey God, but he chose to flee from the presence of God. What was he doing? He was trying to do the impossible to please himself. Hey, hey, Jonah was trying to do the impossible to please himself. Are we trying to do the impossible to please ourselves? Uh -huh. What are the impossible things we are doing? The Lord is telling us, this is the way to go. Uh -huh. But you are crafting of how you can't go and how you want to send others. I want to send others. Eh? Oh, this is a season of expansion and fruitfulness. I shall facilitate them to expand. You are facilitating us to expand. Don't you know my disobedience can affect you? Eh? So don't facilitate me. Let's do it. And ensure I, I obey. So he was trying to do the impossible. What is the impossible? The impossible is to run away from the presence of God. The Bible says, wherever you go, in fact, let me read. Let me first read Jeremiah 23, 23, 24. I am a God near at hand. So he's a God near. And so am I a God near at hand? Says the Lord. Am I a God near at hand? And not a God far, far off. What is he saying? Eh? Can anyone hide himself in secret places? It's a rhetoric question. Uh -huh. So shall I see, not see him? Says the Lord. Do I not feel heaven and earth? Says the Lord. He's asking and he's reminding Judah that he was near and there is no use of trying to hide in secret places to avoid the sight of God. Psalms 139, 7, 8. Psalms 139. 7, 8. What does the Bible say? Give us Psalms 139, 7. What does the Bible say? Can anyone, ah, sorry, Psalms, Psalms. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. 
If I go to the grave, you are there. So Jonah is trying to do the impossible. Why? He fills the heavens and the earth. He is everywhere we go. Heaven is there. In the grave, he is there. So that is trying to do the impossible. Can I tell you? Don't try to run away from the call of God because that is an impossibility. It is an impossibility. Don't try to disobey the voice of God because that is an impossibility. Why? Wherever you run to, what did he do? He went under. He went down and hid himself under somewhere where nobody can see. But was God there? Aha. He decided, I am not going to go to Nineveh. I'm going to go to some place. And I'm not going to stay home. Do you know why he said he doesn't want to stay home? You know he was a true prophet. And he knew every time you disobey God, something will be withdrawn from you. So he knew he was not going to be a relevant prophet back at home. And I'll bring you, I'll take you somewhere. Then he says, I want to go to where? Joppa. Take the ship to Ta Tashish. So he says, I'm going to go where people don't even know that I'm a prophet. And I'm coming home. But I'm also not going to go to Nineveh where God is sending me. That is a guy who knows. That is like some of us here. Eh? This is a message to us who are believers. When we disobey God, we even want to leave church because we know the Lord has been, pre has been speaking from January. Nasema, ah, 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 ah. This God is too much. Oh. Eh? No, you are, you are saying, I am not going to stay in LFM. I am being sent to Singapore. I am not going to go to Singapore. So what am I going to do? I'm going to look for another church. And all, every time you are giving us excuses. Oh, the Lord has spoken. Huh? The Lord spoke to you to obey. To go to Singapore. And do and deliver the message. And because you are aware of that, what are you doing? You are like Jonah. So you will not stay in LFM because the minute you stay in disobedience, something will be withdrawn from you. You will no longer receive the revelation because it is no longer re re relevant here. Because your message should be taken to Singapore. Are you understanding? Because you know, if I stay here in disobedience, the Lord does not use a disobedient soul. So I'm going to be irrelevant. So what am I going to do? I am going to look for this big church. I don't know that in Nyeri you have big churches. But I know in a city I come from that starts with a, with a letter, uh, the alphabet is N. Uh -huh, that city I come from. There are very many big churches. And what do we do? Because we don't want to obey. Because we know the truth. We know that. What do we do? We will go and, get, and sit at the back and cross my legs, looking very well. And when the pastor is here, is there, he's saying, Na ule mtu kuna kitu. Eh? Ule mtu kuna? Kuna kitu. Ule mtu. Lakini hezi yongea, because umeka wapi? I'm not speaking to you back, Bencha. I'm just saying umeka amba. Just in case you're seated there. Umeka ambali. It is because you're disobedient. So when you are there, uh -huh, you are hiding. But is God there where you went? He is seeing you. So as pastor is talking about, it is a new year. The season of expansion and fruitfulness. You in your ears, you're hearing, Singapore, Singapore, repent. Singapore, go and say repent. When you come out of church, people are asking you, uh -huh, what was the message today? It was, ah, it was awesome. It was great. It was powerful. So what did the pastor say? Ah, I was blessed. Usha ibarikiwa. Hakuna kitu anaseme. At least, at least catch, catch something, eh? Catch? Catch something. Because I will start asking you, are you Jonah? And are you hiding in LFM? People who are not hiding here, they catch the word. They know, today the Lord spoke to me. I should not hide because the Lord is seeing me wherever I am. He even is, he atta medhuda. Ina ito nini? Iyo kitu. They in the inner part, the innermost part of our being. The innermost part of our being. He can even see how you are trying to craft. Even now you are hearing God. Please don't tell him to shut up. I can hear people silencing God. Don't talk. You are shouting. Hey, God, una shout. Watch out to shout. Eh? 
Eh, unachoma, aki God unachoma. Yani ulituma, 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 ulituma Adebra, by the way, Adebra. Ulituma Adebra kutoka that city starts with N. To come and shout this much. Because this is a message I've been hearing. I have been hearing you at night. Actually, I even dreamt, I, 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 I even dreamt going to go, going, go, go. But now I have been hiding. I have been saying, oh, do I leave my family? Do I leave my job? Do I leave what? What else do we want? Don't you want to leave? I, 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 and, I, you know, and the things we call comfort. It's nothing. Because what is comfort? What is comfort? Have you ever tried to sleep for 14 hours? Have you ever tried to sleep for 14 hours? Have you ever tried to sleep for 14 hours? Have you ever tried to sleep for 14 hours? Eh, mgongo ina nani kwako? So which comfort are you looking for? Eh, you can only sleep for a particular time. But I came to talk to you who is asleep that you may arise. Stop hiding there. Stop hiding. Stop hiding there. He is omnip omnipotent. Eh? Omnipresent. Eh? He is all powerful everywhere. So you can never outdo God. You can never outsmart God. Each generation in outsmart God. Eh, what can I find with God? Mimi ni malize masters. Nikshao maliza masters. Dio sasa ni kwenye time ya kukusava. Nane na kwambi utakuwa hapo. You know your assignment might not take you to that years. Haya. Na shout eh? Ah, eh, what can I shout? Na uongeza volume. Ah, uh usi -uh. nseme hivyo. Ah, your assignment. You were supposed to have started at 18. Leave Pastor, don't say, you know Pastor Carol started at the age of, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, at the age of what? Ah, uh ah, -uh. your assignment, if you're supposed to start at the age of 13, it is your assignment. And it has an expiry date. It has an expiry? Ni acha mimi, ata kama ni mze, wacha mimi, ni hubiri, ju my assignment has a date, and I am in time, and the time of my assignment, don't compare. Do what you're supposed to do. Do it at 13, do it at 18, do it at 20, do it at 16, do your assignment, because it has an expiry date. Stop taking yourself to storms that are necessary. Because they will come anyhow. Sitaki kujipeleka kwa storms. Zenye zija hazija pangwa. But whichever way, the Lord shall use them to glorify himself. So he will come there where you are. So Jonah ran into a storm because of disobedience. A respected man who was speaking the word of God. He went and got into a ship. The ship to Tashish looked very attractive. And most of the times, the ship to Tashish looks very attractive. But it is heading into a storm. That ship that looks very attractive. Where is it heading? <laughs> oh, where do you think it was heading? It headed to her. But it looked very attractive to hide in. That job that looks very lucrative. And that is where we are hiding so that we don't serve God. Uh -huh. Looks very attractive. But where is it heading? Into a storm. My God. Anything, yeah, it doesn't matter how to eat at your wife, by the way. Boom, Wangalia, too. How you are dem, Sijuka Maka, next Nako Demiako. We are wife. Wangalia, who you has an ability to take you to the storm. You know, yes, the bishop and I, we'd, we, we we'd busted someone's, our spouse's calls. They were, told, they were told to guard their calls when we were doing our team building. Hmm? Bef <laughs> so, uh, we told them to guard their calls. Everybody to guard their and ensure even a spouse does not destroy it. When my husband was very, you know, I was not an enemy. You see, I was not, I'm not an enemy. But what did I do? When I'm giving instructions, I'm saying, please ensure nobody bust your balloon because that is your call. I do like this. He lost his call because he never saw me as a... That wife can take you into a storm. Please don't return them to bishop and say, who in the Don't you ever return me. Because it can't... It can, Anything you know ah, can lead you into a, a storm. That pretty thing, that pretty thing that looks so pretty can hurt no big, can hurt no fly. Eh? It looks very, it can, if that, that job, that car, one day is there, tomorrow is not. 
They're, what I'm saying is, there is something better than that. There is something beyond us. There is something beyond us. There is something beyond what we can see. Ask the people who have been in business like us. It is one, it's there today and then tomorrow. It's not there. Hallelujah. So, when he was there, the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to, to be broken. Storms don't just happen. Storms don't happen by chance. Jonah knew that God had sent the storm on account of his, his disobedience. And we know why God is sending that storm. What, what God is looking for. We know why. You know, Tunajua. But you want to fast for 40 days. Kuelewa zaidi. Eh? And I, I, I know you understand me. Like, let me talk to a young person somewhere. You know that is not the guy, that is not the girl. They are not born again. And even if they are not born, they are born again. They are, not, they are out of the will of God. Eh? Like in Isasa, Uktukikwambia, Naja to Naoneanga, by the Tunaoneanga, Bali. By the time Unakuja to Shakuo, Pasi. Nikon, Nikon, I want to introduce somebody to you. It's this one. Namuliza. Are they born again? Are they serious? Or they are jokers? What, that, are they serving? That is what you are. You know, serious or a joker? Are, either, are they serving? Because you cannot be a girl who is serving in church. And know you have been married. Kai, oh, you listen. Please don't go through that experience. Get out of it. Eh? And now you bring somebody who does not even know. At his service in Azanga Sangapi. Hey, you know, Jumi Nafkiang in Azanga 12. Jumi Miklas Kuna Kujanga. Ah, ah. Tulianza 7.30. Sasa 12 ni kuenda tunaenda nyumba. Alafu hundi unaletea. Uko praise team. Ma'am, this is a guy. Eh? This is a... You already know you're in disobedience. Why? Every time you go down to Egypt, be ready to pay the price. You understand me? Every time you go outside the will of God, you will have to pay the price. And the price of disobedience is not easy. It's not easy. So we already know, and Jonah knew that he was, um, he was disobedient. And his disobedience, what happened? It was costing others. The captain came to him, verse number six, and said, what do you mean, sleeper? They called Jonah sleeper. He said, arise. In verse number six, we see the sailor or the captain tell Jonah, arise. Is it true? In verse number two of the same chapter, what did God tell Jonah? Arise or go. Is it true? The same thing that God had told Jonah. It is repeated in the storm. So God is not going to change his message now because you are in a storm. He's still going to say obey. And he can use anything. He can use anyone. And he said arise go to... Uh -uh, no. Okay. Verse number six. He told him, arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. Aha. The pagan captain was very agitated. How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. He was talking to a prophet. He was talking to a believer. He was talking to one that God speaks to. He was talking to one who had a message of redemption. A message of, uh, of judgment. A message to Nineveh because God still loved Nineveh. God still loves sinners. And he wants to send us to them. So what was he doing? He was speaking to a sleeping Christian. The captain was speaking to a sleeping Christian. What a tragic sin. That the sailors had no relationship with Yahweh. And here, there is one man on board who had a relationship with the true God. Who knew his word and worshipped him. Yet, he was asleep. Here is a Christian who knows Singapore is perishing. Because they don't know God. But what does he choose to do? These Christians chooses to sleep. Here is a Christian who knows that the, the people of Kangemi, the people of Ihororo, where else? Dangaridi, Game Rock, have not yet known the Lord. And the Lord has been saying, go ye. Now, not only that, now the heathens are saying, we, are, we need rescue. Jusikuzile tunaishi ni kubaya. 
tunauziwa maji na hiyo kila kitu kingine bado hatujamuona Mungu so we need the true message they are saying uh, there is a craving outside there the unbelievers are craving for the true god they were telling Jonah arise because uh, cry to your god uh, because they had a sense uh, that this is a god that has sent them the storm and they are telling call your god because Jonah had the true God had the Yahweh. They knew that out of his God we shall be delivered. We shall be delivered. So we are being told, you all of you sleeping Christians, it is time for you to arise because game rock is perishing. Ha <laughs> ha. When we are hiding, when we don't even know what is going on, why? Because we have hidden ourselves in the four corners of the wall of the church. We do not even want to intermingle with anybody. We don't even want to know how sinners are, are living, uh, or we are sleeping, uh, and the world uh, and generations are perishing. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, why don't you wake up? Uh, because you're about to hear me say today, around and God call your God, uh, because it is your God uh, that can get me needs. Uh, it is your God. That Kenya is looking for. Kenya is looking for truth right now. Kenya is looking for sincere preachers right now. Is looking for sincere believers like you. True who are seekers of good, of God in truth and spirit. Who worship the Lord in truth and spirit. But somebody is hiding under the ship. Somebody is hiding. That is what I came to say. Arise. Rise above the storm now and cry to your God. And what Jonah, what did Jonah do? Jonah said, It is me. I am responsible. What can we do? Throw me out. Throw me out. You know what they tried to do? The Bible says, Nevertheless, they proceeded. But the waves never stopped. Hey, when the waves became stronger and stronger, they decided, Hey, I think it's time to throw this. Now, our ministries cannot be dead because of your lack of, obedi of, of obedience. You know this church is supposed to be full because there are sinners all over. But guess what? Jonas are hiding right here. Ask your neighbor, you are Jonah. Jonah slept in a place where he could not help with the work that needed to be done. Sleeping Christians Stay away from the work of the Lord. He was staying away. When the work was continuing, the sailors are very busy. What, what is he doing? How can you even get in a good sleep when there are waves? Something is totally out of order. Something is totally out of order. And when he's sleeping there, his disobedience is hurting the sailors and hurting the ship. They have even to throw their goods hard and had earned goods. Eh? Their wealth was there. Treasures were there. So his disobedience was costing others. And when we were learning about the blessings of obedience, one thing that we learned, that your obedience is tagged onto your family. Your obedience is tagged onto your ministry. If our ministries have to go anywhere, we have to be obedient people because the disobedience of one person can cause the disobedience of the whole church and the destruction of the whole church. Are you understanding? So Jonah slept and had no problem, idea of the problems around him. Sleeping Christians do not know what is really going on. Hiya. In the news, to know how I live in the news too. Eh? From one channel to the mekufa. They have no sensitivity of the spirit because the conscious is dead. They became comfortable. They became familiar with the voice of God. They even silence on a sema shout sana God. Silence God. When you see the dead, what comes into your spirit? There is something that comes. Ephesians 5, 14, even as I finish. Ephesians 5, 14. Jonah slept when he was in great danger. Sleeping Christians are in danger, but they don't know. Jonah was in danger. We are in danger. And we don't know. May the Lord help us. Ephesians 5.14 as we get there. Jonah slept while the heathen needed him. Jonah slept when the heathen needed him. Sleeping Christians sleep while the world needs their message and testimony. 
And that is why we have to arise and ask the Lord to give us strength to rise above that storm and now go and do what God called you to do. Do we have some people want to arise above the storm? This is the word that I had when I entered here. Therefore he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Ah, LFM Yeri, are you hearing? Yeah. Arise, arise, arise from the storm. Don't stay there anymore. Don't stay there anymore. Why don't you take responsibility and say, push me there, take me there. It's okay. Take me to the deep. Let me obey. Ah, he said, throw me. Throw me. And God was there waiting and sent some fish. So you are not going to perish. As disciples were praying, we are going down. We are going to perish. When you cry to God, when you tell the Lord, I have given up self. I have given up everything about me. What is the Lord going to do? He is going to be there to hear you. He is going to be there to give you the way of escape. Why don't you say, Lord, I want to rise above this storm that has come into my life because of disobedience while others are perishing. I came to announce you are rising above that storm. Jonah's have to arise because the word is crying. The sailors, the country, the leaders are asking what is going on. No, they know that even witchcraft is not an answer. No, they are asking uh, where is the true God? Uh, the true God of the true church. Uh, where are you? And instead of rising, and instead of rising above the storm, Tunanza Kusema, Uchumi Nimbaya, Economy Nimbaya, which economy do you believe in? Uh, which report do you believe in? Uh, you are economy. It's not this economy. You have a father in heaven uh, who is your source. Uh, your economy is a God's economy. I tell you, he's a God in our seasons, uh, good and bad season. Uh, as for you, you shall not lack. Uh, but those who trust in the Lord, because you trust in the Lord, uh, as for you, why don't you say it doesn't matter? Me, I will arise. Me, I'll arise. Uh, I refuse to be detoured. Uh, I refuse to be detoured. Uh, refuse the hula balusa. Uh, refuse the decoys. Uh, refuse the drama that is happening in Kenya. And arise. Uh, get discipled. Uh, get to preach. Uh, send yourself uh, because you've already been sent. Uh, Go preach to Nineveh. Go and proclaim. Oh, and proclaim the word of the Lord everywhere until Neri has had Christ. Nairobi is not ready for us. Don't tell me you want to leave Neri and come to Nairobi. That is a different ball game altogether. Our Zani, come on Neri, Ujaweza, Usikuje. Deal with the witch doctors of Neri. Go and tell them, close your business. We are closing your business. We are closing your business. Uh -huh. I refuse to stay in this storm. Uh -huh. This storm of telling me that I need to think about me, myself, and I. It is over. Uh -huh. Now it is time uh -huh. for LFM Nyeri to say, I refuse to think about myself only. This kingdom, uh -huh, it is about him and others. Uh -huh. It has nothing to do with you. You are just a vessel. Without him, you are nothing. Your life is about God and others. Where are you there? Where are you there? Because you are just a vessel. Just say, I'm just a vessel. I am rising up. And when he arose, even the unbelievers worship the true God. They said, oh, they feared the true God. When you arise near each other, all the unbelievers, all those who have not believed in God, for all years, they'll come to your rising. Christ will give you light when you arise from your dead state. From your dead state, from your sleeping state, you must say, I will be relevant in my generation. Before my father recalls me home, I must be relevant. I must affect life. I must bring transformation. There must be deliverance. Hallelujah. If Kangami is not delivered, why are you asking God to take you to Runda? Do you understand? You have a territorial mandate. You have a territorial mandate. So LFM Neri, awake, hallelujah, and tell the Lord, 
Lord, uh, give me wings uh, to fly above the storm uh, because there is somewhere I must go. There is somewhere I must go. There is something I must do. They worship the Lord. Uh, they say, uh, indeed, uh, this is a God uh, that is all powerful. Glory came back to God. Uh, do you know why people belittle our God? Do you know why people belittle our God? It is because we are silent. It is because we are hiding. It is because we are not even aware. We have taken ourselves into a storm. But it's time to say, Lord Jesus, I hear you very well right now. Oh, right now, I, I, I arise. You told me to go in verse number two. The sailor has told me to arise. Now, not only will, am I going to arise, let me be thrown to your will. Oh, let me be thrust to your will. Whatever it takes, now I want to obey. Whether it is a fish that is going to carry me to go to Nineveh, I welcome her. Whether it is whatever it is going to carry me to my place of obedience, I welcome it. But one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do what God calls me to do because his name must be lifted. He must be glorified in everything. And even in this storm, God must be glorified. Why don't you turn around your disobedience and tell the Lord, I took myself to this storm. I disobeyed. I took myself to this storm. Now, I am turning it around. When my heart is overwhelmed, when I'm in distress, Lord, take me to the rock that is higher than I so that I can go and do your will. God bless you.